This is so nervous. But it's just us. Like, yeah, literally, like, it's just us. Yeah, I works. feel like the start's gonna be like a bit weird. A bit weird. We might, and then at the end, maybe we redo the intro. Is everyone comfortable? You don't yeah. look comfortable. <laughs> yeah, like, so yeah, uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> Wait. Get, just wipe your under eye. I have washed my hands. Yeah, you got it. Okay, let's go. My leg is cramping up. Oh my god. <laughs> we haven't even started. <laughs> Uh, okay, are we ready? Yes. Oh. Hi guys, it's Daryl. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Today is a very exciting video. I have two of the most fabulous people, most fabulous Parisians Aww, with cool. me. Um, and we are going to be talking to you guys about culture shock that we have had in Paris and in France. And the reason I want to make this video is because we are all not French and we're from three different countries. We have Tash from Australia and <laughs> Ro from the UK and me, of course, from Canada. So maybe a few words from our lovely guests. Okay. <laughs> so I'm from Sydney, Australia, very far compared to you guys. Yeah. Um, I'm classy story. I came for love. I fell in love with a Parisian. Hadn't seen him in a very long time because of COVID and Australia is just so strict right now. So finally came and got a six month contract here and I'm living with him. Actually, that's super exciting. I feel like people will be very excited with that because yeah. Uh, yeah, Tash is doing her internship here. She managed to get an internship. So very inspiring. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully getting a full time job from it. Yeah. We'll see. You don't want to to be it. continued. To be continued. Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> So um, I studied French at university and I've always like spent a lot of time traveling around France like with my family. Obviously I come from the UK so it's mm. super super close. We could just take the ferry and we would drive and camp around France. So I was always interested in France. I did part of my Erasmus here and now I'm back and I am working as a language assistant in a high school. So, yeah. Oh my god. Three successful ladies. So I met Ro through a friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. No, not a friend of a friend. I met Ro through a, a friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which was cool. Ro, like she did as a language assistant and my friend was a language assistant. And so that's how I met them. And <laughs> Tash, I met off of Facebook. I was lonely, okay. Through a mutual <laughs> loneliness. Um, but yeah, it's kind of crazy how you meet like international people. So I like feel so lucky that I, I like actually feel so good that I met yeah. you guys. Well, yeah, it's super important, especially when you're an expat yeah feel yeah yeah we all really even get on and like yeah. i feel like everything is just so easy we yes just, like, and you need that especially in france like, yeah things are different so i have eight categories i let's okay let's start off with maybe the first culture shocks when we first came oh yeah that. Ooh. i am being attacked by the plant right now <laughs> We're gonna start with some things that shocked us, like the things that yeah. shocked us when we first got here, and then okay. we'll move into like more categories, like like specific categories of culture shock, like I don't know, socializing, work culture, boys yes. and relationships, Ooh, and la. stuff like that. So yeah, let's start with like the biggest shock we had when we got here. Okay, I immediately think of COVID for me, okay. the way France was handling COVID, because I come from Australia and one person has COVID, it's like chaos yeah and very different very yeah. different and i think when i arrived to the airport everyone was on top of me and breathing on me <laughs> and i was like i want to go home like i have covid everyone's breathing on me mm -hmm. no one gave am i allowed to swear <laughs> no one cared no Let's, one cared yeah <laughs> <laughs> no one cared anyway literally no one cared and everyone was touching me and just it was that was a huge culture shock for me. Yeah, okay. I felt really scared. I was like, "Oh wow, I'm not in safe Australia anymore." Yeah, but then I adapted. Mm -hmm. I got used to it. So yeah, I think I had the same thing because when I went home last summer, Canada was so strict. They were yeah. like, "You can't do anything. You can't see people. You couldn't like see anyone inside your house. You could only see people in like groups yeah. of your family. You couldn't yeah. even socialize outside of your family." Like same. And then when you come to France, it's like no one cares. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. I don't want to say it. Like, it's not a good thing that no one cares. It's just it a was very shocking. different approach. Yes. yes. I think that people just didn't take it seriously in yes. France. Like, I people were still going to parties and 
like mm-hmm. young people were kind of just like YOLO. And yeah. past curfew as well. I, oh, I yeah. saw that a lot. Oh, I mean, yeah. same. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> amount of times I had made like a ambiguous attestation to... <laughs> Yeah, but, but the curfew, no, the curfew was a tough one because like you have to think about it. So people yeah. who work, like for example, I have an office job. I work like nine, no, I work like 10 to six and the curfew was at 6 p.m. Like, what are you supposed to do? How, what are you supposed yeah, to, like how are you supposed to get your groceries and stuff? Like, how can you see anyone else? Like that was such a random, that was really hard. That was a, yeah. yeah. And I think that's why people didn't respect it because it was just so it was unrealistic. Too much. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I feel like when I first arrived, like, COVID wasn't the big, like the, the way that the country was dealing with COVID wasn't the big culture shock for me, but it was the administration. Like, yeah. because the first things you do when you arrive are you have to open a bank account, you have to find an apartment, you have to get a French phone number, you have to oh, apply for your nice. car, like you have to do so many things. And like um, at my new job, I had to sign like so many different documents, provide them with so many different documents, That's scans so of my passport, like everything even mm-hmm. getting a visa yeah oh yeah the problem start before you even get to france like yeah i mean i was very lucky because i came oh, just yeah. before brexit and okay. managed to benefit from like a special deal where i get a five-year like cut de séjour. so yeah i was very lucky in that sense that i didn't have to deal with the visa stress yes but i do remember like in the first couple of weeks i wasn't even thinking about socializing like i wasn't like yeah. How can I make friends? Like, where are the good bars to go to? I was like, really? oh my god, how do I live somewhere? You know, like. Yeah, I think That's it's easy so for you because when you came here, you had like a place already. Yes. So I immediately was like, yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm from Australia, and that's how I met you. Like, it was two weeks in that I had arrived. Yeah, that's crazy. Since I met you. Like two weeks in when I first got here, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I did not have an apartment. Yeah. I had not my life together in any way. Like. I mean, I didn't either. I know what you mean. Like the the apartment. Is yeah, like, the apartment is the worst. Like when I first came to France, I was like living in a hotel, like in a cheap hotel. Like let's not think four stars. You're like there was just chaotic. Yeah, it's yeah. it's chaotic when you like you're living out of a suitcase and all that. Anyways, this is I what I want to say about the administration is like yeah, it's absolutely the worst and nothing is fast and I feel like there's no empathy in the system. Like no one wants to be empathetic for your situation and no one wants to help you. I found that I did get some help from my colleagues. Okay, your colleagues, yeah. But they were already trying to welcome a foreign language assistant into their work environment. Right. They had already said, yes, we want you, foreigner, to come work for us. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. obviously for that reason, there were people who were speaking English, there were people speaking like other languages yeah. who could assist. But yes, I agree. I definitely feel like there are no like exceptions with administration. If you're missing a document, yeah. it doesn't matter if um, the document got eaten by your dog and it's going to take you two years to replace it. You know, like you are just the number in the system. Yeah. That's so true. And it's like, if you don't follow things to a T, you don't get your paperwork. Like I had a couple friends who like book their visa appointments and like you have to book your appointment months in advance. Like you you can't miss it essentially. And they would go to the thing and they didn't have a photocopy in the precise way that they wanted it. She had like, she took a picture and she printed that and they were like, this isn't a photocopy. This is a printout of a picture you took. Yeah. And they made her leave. And she was like, what, what do I do now? Like, they just made her leave. And so... Yeah, no, yeah. that's so true. They yeah. want everything completely official. Otherwise, it's just a waste of everyone's time. And it's annoying because because they, like, do it like that, and they only accept, like, the paper copies. This is my big peeve. My, my biggest peeve in France is they don't accept electronic copies of anything. Like, it has to be a photocopy, oh. like, a physical piece of paper. It's like, ridiculous. And like, usually the original... They never want like a copy or something. Well, they want you to show the original, but then like, I would like to be able to send stuff in as a PDF. Like, why do I have to mail this to you? Like, yes. that is what I, I don't get. Like, I'm sorry, it's because- like we're back in the middle ages or something. Yeah. Then I have but, to work yeah. out like how to find envelopes, where to buy a stamp, yeah. like how to go to yes. the post office and talk to people, interact with people rather than something send simple, email. Yeah. like um, a scan and an email, which is like, a lot easier to do in a foreign language because you can have the time to yeah. Yeah. to like maybe use like a translate like app or something or yeah. look up some words if yes. you're not sure like you have the time to think about exactly what you're going to say that's so rather true. than it have to be like a spontaneous conversation yeah and which obviously yeah. like after a few months living here you you pick it up and it becomes easier but i think in the very first like a few weeks, it yeah. can be quite intimidating. Hundred mm-hmm. mm-hmm. percent. And there's just so many things on your list. You have your 
housing, like finding an apartment, putting yeah. that whole package of paperwork together, doing mm -hmm. your visa, your health card, your insurance, like your health insurance and your housing insurance. I don't know, which is like the list is, the list is endless. I feel like I've been here three years and I, I'm not even done my list of paperwork. Which, like, like I feel like it, it uh, is the same whenever you move, like to whatever yeah, yeah. country, but the French administration system is like a stickler for rules. So you yeah. really yeah. have to make sure you're on top of it. And I, I think too, like, it's not always the same in every country. Like, no. if you go to a, like, if you go to Canada and you're an international person and you want to get an apartment, you don't need two Canadian guarantors. You don't need to earn three times your rent. You don't need to have a permanent contract. Like, there is a sort of like feeling. Allowance. There's like a yeah. trust between like landlord and renter, and yeah. like they don't go by this like very strict process, which like in France they do. So to mm -hmm. get an apartment, you have to have a full like a dossier. You have to have the French guarantor. Like, yeah, they're stop so reminding strict me. With that, yeah, <laughs> I have to. I have to move in September, and I'm so nervous because I definitely don't have any well, of these documents. That's why I'm really lucky because I just moved in with my French boyfriend, and he had to do all that. For yeah, me, so, but it's easy yeah. for him because he has all the paperwork. Like, oh, yeah, well he ready. has. Yeah, and he's got his parents. Parents, yeah, that's yeah. like a yeah. huge thing. Yeah. He would not be able to do it if his parents were not. Work. Like obviously it was super difficult and there was a lot of stress and a lot of pressure to, mm. to do all the administration but yeah. in the end we did all land on our feet and after you get through like the tough processes yeah. you can like really start to enjoy your life and I oh, mean yeah. we're in Paris there's so much yeah. to do there are, like, there's so much there's so many people to meet like we didn't meet when we were doing all of these like finding apartments yeah, things no. because we didn't have the time to be socializing and doing things like that so yeah. although it is tough like it's not the like end of the, the world. worst thing in the no. world and then like you can never recover from that it's like we're still living our lives and you would die yeah. yeah. as well yeah like so yeah not yes just trying to put some positivity yes it's yeah. bad but it will get better <laughs> and yes. we can even we can talk about socializing culture shocks like yeah what was your first like social thing where you for me the biggest shock is that french people don't want to be your friend <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I was telling this to Ro before, maybe you might agree. Like, actually, a French person told me this. French people are like coconuts, and Anglo people are usually like peaches. Like, we're really soft on the outside, full of life, but then we're quite artificial inside. What? But, like, I, don't I wouldn't know. say oh. artificial. I, don't, I would just say sometimes, like, it's hard, it's to, hard get. to open up. Yeah. But on the outside... For French people. No, no, for no, us. For us. We're for us, like, pictures. like it, no, it's hard to get, like, really deep. So we'll be, yes. like, super friendly yeah. in general and be like, oh, my God, hi, oh, my God, haven't seen you in I ages. I love you. Like, love you, oh you're so God. great. Like, Mama. let's get drinks. Mm. Yeah. But then, like, when you're talking about, like, the really deep stuff, like, serious stuff, sometimes it can be harder to, like, share Connect. your own experiences. But with French, they're coconuts. They're really hard to crack. And then once you, it's amazing. It's a thing. French people told me this. My colleagues did. So, do you agree? No. <laughs> really? I I feel do. like it's quite hard to integrate into a group of French friends. Yeah, that's what I mean. A group yeah. of coconuts. Oh my god. <laughs> well, because I think that I think that right off the bat, I'm a very like open person. Mm -hmm. And we all are. But then you throw us into like a group of French, we would like. I have to put it down sometimes I have to be cool and mysterious otherwise I look really like <laughs> otherwise I'm too much yeah. do you get what I mean yeah. yeah actually that is the one thing that I like consistently French people tell me is that I my energy is too high and I'm too enthusiastic and they need me to chill yeah because they think you're being fake that's what I mean they 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 need a, a lot of work. Okay, but that's not me being fake. No, I know, but they're judging that because they're like, "Why you don't even know me? Why are you being so full on?" Like that's how they see it. Uh, okay, and then I think it comes down to a different type of personality. Like I think yeah. North Americans and maybe Anglophones are more, more enthusiastic. Open. Although I don't think you're the most enthusiastic. <laughs> no, okay, I don't mean that in a negative way. I no, mean, no, like, no, no, no. I, I think that I think North Americans are very like over think, the top. I think. It's a stereotype that British people come across as quite cold sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's just the culture that, like, I've been brought up in, like, mm. you don't necessarily, like, show your emotions so openly. Yeah. But then, like, as soon as, like, you become friends with somebody, you really open up. Like, would you say now that I'm cold towards no. you? No. Like, right now, am I getting cold towards you? No. But, like, I don't know. I just kind of want to, like, see the vibe a little bit to start with. So maybe you're more French. 
Yeah. But then you'd look at us, British like and French, like yeah. we're so close across yeah. the channel. Maybe it's like a, a regional thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's I think a good way to put it. Like, mm. it's harder to get to that deeper level. Mm -hmm. But once you are with French people, I think it's great. Then, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to get yeah. through, but then it's like. I have found a lot yeah. of French people be like very interested in why I'm here. Interesting. Okay. Like I find a lot of people be like, oh well, that's so cool that you've chosen to move countries and that like Yeah, that's true. You have launched yourself into like completely different life. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like they give us like a bit of respect from that. Mm. I feel like it's quite hard to make like sweeping generalizations. Yeah. Yes. Because there are always gonna be exceptions and there are always gonna be people who disagree. Yeah. Like maybe some of the things we've already said are controversial. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Sure. These are based on our yeah. um, experiences. Like I love to generalize because I feel like a lot of my experiences yeah. are the same, but I don't like, I also don't wanna like Feeling put that yeah, on. Right. Oh, all French people are this way because like, like obviously that's yeah. what it is. Like for example, when we were talking about the administration, like obviously some of the things we said were quite negative because we had tough experiences. Yeah. But we still love being here, like we yeah. love being in France and it's not like, oh, we hate France because no. yeah. the administration is super tough. It's just like, oh, this is just a problem that you might come across. I think you it's a shock. It's just, it's just yeah, a culture just shock. shock. Exactly. Yeah. Culture yeah, shock. I would agree. That's interesting what you said about how they're interested in knowing why you're here. Yeah. Because yeah. I went to a party with French people and they were all like, oh my gosh, like I could never leave France. <laughs> That's amazing that you're doing that. Like they were so curious that why I left like they were amazed that I could do that because mm -hmm. a lot of them are very like just stay in France not all of them yes yeah, general generalizations yeah, from one experience everyone was agreeing that they couldn't leave France which, yeah you know so yeah uh, I think that does get kind of sick though like not sick I mean uh, like that gets kind of old like when I first came here like maybe five years ago it was fun to be like the token anglophone at the yeah. parties and like have all that attention but then the more you live here like i personally don't like being the token anglophone oh, no. like i don't like that being my main i don't like people focusing on that like you feel like you're not a person then yeah i feel like the only thing that i'm interested like the only thing that's interesting to, about me to french people is the fact that i'm not french exactly and i think that's that so also true. goes into like dating life here as well like i think that a lot of guys are just like they're interested in dating like an international person or an anglophone they find mm -hmm. that interesting okay it's like exotic almost yeah yeah are we, are we gonna go into like guy like <laughs> no because you just talked about <laughs> hey, tell us about your relationship no <laughs> no we should do we should break it up like okay how dating is different from back yeah. home yeah or, like guys I feel like it's, oh i have so much to say on that topic time for the tea what's your Wait, biggest culture talk culture shock yeah, like oh, I feel like you have the best success story, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, like, see, this is gonna sound really bad, but I'm just being honest. Like, I do not find that they have the greatest first impressions. Like, they're not like. French boys? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. They're not like over the top and tell you what they feel. <laughs> and I think, me as a person, I don't even know if it's because I'm Australian, but I say everything I feel like I'm like yeah me too I like you oh I like what you're wearing like I'm like so... positive reinforcement yeah. yeah that's what I need yeah. yeah and you just I don't think you get that initially initially because like now I'm in love and everything but in the start it was not like that like I think it took two months for my French boyfriend to say, yeah, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's obsessed with me. No, but like, I just, I really struggled with that. I think that was the biggest culture shock because with guys back in Australia, it was like a mutual, like, I like you. And they'd be like, yeah, I like you too. And mm -hmm. then you yeah. move on. Well, at least it worked out in the end. Yeah. yeah. You know, like oh no, like, yeah, it's fine now. But like, yeah. I held on because I knew that he liked me, but I just knew he was struggling to express it. Yeah. They act like really cold, I find. Yeah. I would, I would agree. Cause like in my, in one of my last relationships, um, it was like pretty long term. And, um, the biggest issue, like the consistent issue for us was like that there was no positive reinforcement from him to me. Mm. And I was like, do you even think I'm attractive? Like I've never you heard just you don't say, know. like, it's do like you, mystery. do you think that? And like, yeah, I think that, from my experience and yours, it sounds like like it's hard for them to. 
initially as well to trust as well I yeah. think they don't mm-hmm. want to give everything away mm-hmm. I don't know what it and is and I feel like I don't, know. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys but it's like I find it a bit difficult to not get like caught in the stereotypes like oh like French so romantic yeah. like oh let's go for a walk along the Seine together like obviously I know that's not the reality yeah. sometimes I'm like do I like them because they're genuinely like a nice person they're interested in me I'm interested in them yeah or like do I like them because like they're French and we could speak French together mm. and like and they have sexy. a cute accent and because yeah. like I know it's a stereotype but sometimes I still find myself getting like a little yeah. bit like yeah. caught up in it no you you, know? ro- you romanticize it if it's yeah. not ne- even there mm-hmm. like for me when I first moved here if they spoke with the French accent I was like you're the most beautiful person yeah. I've ever seen which I like, think it's, very it's true. almost like yeah. exactly the same thing that you said earlier about French guys being yeah. interested in us because we're international yeah exactly you're right like it's probably yeah. exactly the same yeah. but like in reverse yeah I think so too no and that's true about the French like I went after my boyfriend because I liked his accent yeah <laughs> I know <laughs> like he I loved it and I was like oh I'm on to you so I think that's true mm-hmm. and I think that like I think the biggest shock that like culture shock for me when I'm dating someone in French in France is <laughs> also in French, um, is the way that, like my experience in the way that men think about relationships, and I'm not even just talking about my relationships, like I have and had like a lot of male colleagues, I have male friends, mm-hmm. I went to school with a bunch of guys, like it's this is my impression from talking to like a lot of French men that, like okay, tell me if, tell me if you agree, but yeah. the French men like, they really prioritize their male like friendships. They normally have these male groups and they do all their stuff like with their guy friends, which is really good. But oftentimes, like what I feel like is that the relationship aspect of their lives is often deprioritized when it's compared to their friends. Like mm, that's interesting. In my previous relationships, it's always been like their focus was their friends and they wanted mm. to build with their friends and yeah. I was sort of like sort of a secondary thing which is hard I think when you're in a long-term relationship like I just didn't feel like they had a vision for their romantic relationships but they had a vision for their friendships like I don't know if that's clear yeah no I get that, oh, that was I would say that like to some extent I agree yeah. but also I think it's like um it comes from the fact that like a lot of French people grow up in the same place as all of their friends and then stay there so for example somebody who's parisian who has lived his whole life in paris already has this like really well established group of friends that he's known for maybe 20 years so obviously if you come into his life maybe he's still really into you but there's so much history and there's like such a bond between yeah their friendship groups yeah. which is another reason why it can be quite difficult to integrate to into get a friendship into it. group that is yeah. so true because like they're usually friends with their childhood or high yeah. school friends yeah. from like mm-hmm. the beginning and then you're just this girl who's come in to their life recently you mm-hmm. know so but i think once you're in then it's okay like the coconut analogy i was talking about. yeah but for you but i've been in a couple like long term relationships with french guys and like I don't know. I I had never been able to like have like a substantial enough like mm-hmm. like their friends would always sort of come before me, and they were more interested in like partying their, with their friends mm-hmm. than like spending a Friday night with me. Like I, I don't know. But do you think that will change with like age as well? Do you think that's just because we're still young? Yeah, but okay, we know like <laughs> I know we know. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? No, just like the guys we've been with have not been young. Yeah, like uh. They've been between like I would say twenty seven and thirty two. Oh like those, wow. that's sort of like my dating. Mm-hmm. Like no, I don't want to say my, but like it's like how much older can you get? <laughs> yeah, but for them to mature. But yeah. but by that point, like for me, because that's why it's a culture shock. Because for me, like mm-hmm. in my culture where I oh, come yeah. from, like by the age, if you're in a if you're in a long term serious relationship by the age of like twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, like you are showing signs of like wanting to build with that person yeah. and to Settling like down, settle down maybe yeah. not wasting Start time. a family or something yeah and i don't feel like that yeah. is prioritized here yeah like i think 100 percent. i think it kind of goes they just like live their life but then also yeah. that, could just, that could just yeah. be the people we're meeting <laughs> like we could just be meeting bad people for us yeah but know? i've been living here for five years <laughs> oh my god no, i'm just trying to realize <laughs> yes no it's it just really depends i think but that's the thing, we're going off what we experience. We will see. Anyways, that's yeah, that's my biggest culture shock when it comes to relationships. It's hard to feel like a priority. 
I just think I'm it, all the, sorry yeah. there you go no I was just gonna say the feeling thing I think that's you don't feel that what feeling thing like expressing yourself and getting much in return like initially oh my god yeah <laughs> like for sure 100% I think, yeah. uh, when I first like my exes in the past when I first met them like they would lead with insults like yeah and like, they don't I don't think they realize it though no they think it's normal but, but I also why. wonder if it's a language barrier thing because yeah yeah maybe like we, maybe, were, yeah. we were discussing about how you're a completely different person in a different language like you have a different personality yeah, like for, for example sure. i can speak some french but i can't make jokes in french oh, no. yeah. and in general i think i'm quite a funny person in english yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you are a funny like, person. so no, it's kind of hard no. to like really like yeah. show your true self yeah mm -hmm. in another language yeah i think that's so true i think that you are fully a different like your personality changes if you're not speaking your mother tongue so mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point i that's agree that's very true Sorry, I, <laughs> I just like had a fart blank. Oh wait, one thing to say about yeah, like the dating. I think you know how we're saying that they're cold or whatever, but when they compliment you, you have to believe them because it's like genuine. Like they're being genuine. You think so? Yes. I think that's like that. I think that's like that with any guy though. You want to trust your partner. No, no, no but what I mean is like, like he compliments me. I don't believe. It. No, no, no. But for example, like. I don't know, with guys back home in Australia, they'll be like, oh, you're so cute. And it's just like, oh, shut up. <laughs> but like with my boyfriend, he will not come, like he'll be like, oh, you're wearing that? Or, oh, that. but w I know when I look good because he'll be like, oh, you look amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So because he doesn't shower you with compliments all he the time, like, you know, it's like the when he does give you a compliment, it's like, it's like, oh, okay. That's when it's, it's like very really sincere. Genuine. He's yeah. very sincere. And I've, I've noticed that with other, like I've noticed that with his friends too. Like they'll be like comment on something and I'll be like, oh, okay. They must like that. Otherwise they wouldn't say anything or they'd comment on it. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. I feel like there's a lot of like bluntness, but it's That's good in true. a way. Yeah. Same with girls too. Like my colleagues can be brutal. Yeah. As I feel hell. like that's a cultural thing. I feel like since moving to France, I've definitely become better at calling people out on things. Yeah. Like if mm. I need, if I have boundaries and they've been crossed, I will say like, because I know that like, maybe a French person wouldn't be afraid to say something. Yeah. So if somebody mm. is like behaving, That's a good point. if somebody is behave like it's something that I've learned with mistakes, of course, like mm. everything. But if somebody is behaving in a way that I don't like towards me, mm. I will say like hey dude like that's not cool like i don't mm. like that you said that about me or like because mm -hmm. they're just super frank so it's like wow yeah I'll so you feel too. like it gives me more confidence to say what i actually want yeah. to say yeah that makes sense yeah i think you're right that the general vibe here is like frankness and like it's not necessarily a bad thing no no, no but that's I mean, because we're here we've like it's almost like you're able to stick up for yourself more yes, like definitely. To, oh, I was 100% a pushover before. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's yeah. just like a little bit you less have to, Yeah. Yeah. Which but is no, a good thing. That's why. And I trust their value, like mm -hmm. their opinion, because I'm like, okay, they think that outfit looks shit. That's cool. <laughs> it's true. Actually, you would never have someone like, I don't think anyone <gasps> back home would be like, I don't like what you're wearing. No way. <laughs> like, no way. Whereas, yeah, my exes have for sure said that. My friends have for sure been yeah. like, yeah girl what <laughs> yeah exactly but they don't mean it to be mean yeah no it's just like Honestly. productive <laughs> productive <laughs> productive criticism yeah is it? yeah like uh yeah. what is that constructive word? constructive criticism. <laughs> <laughs> productive anyway yes yeah. <laughs> the more you're in france the worse your english gets i find <laughs> yeah. genuinely like i am supposed to be teaching english yeah. teaching english and i find that i just say like Sentences that don't even make sense anymore. Okay, I don't want this to be a negative video. It's not. Because, like, the, fir the first thing that, like, on my last culture video, like, some of the first comments were like, well, if you don't like it, leave. And it's like, I no. We both, we all love being in France. Yeah. Like, love France. I feel like the reason that we wanted to talk about all of these things yeah. is more just to, like, make you prepare aware. the people for this. Yeah. Because it is a shock. Like, yeah. And it's comforting to know that other people are in the same boat. Yeah. 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 Like, moving, yeah. moving countries is such a change in your life uh, mm -hmm. yeah. so it's important to be prepared and yeah. obviously we all love it here and we're yeah. having such a good time we're so happy to be here you yeah. know it's just like maybe it's if different. we had known all of these things before we came we would have been more prepared and we would have like and less offended because sometimes when when something goes wrong and like no one is when a situation's bad you're offended that like how it's exactly. transpiring you know Take it wrong. so yeah. yeah so i wanted to share my my like most positive culture shock about being in France is um, is like 
their appreciation for life. Like, yes. I, I feel like when I was back, when I was back home in Canada, I was studying full time. I had three jobs. Mm -hmm. I was really focused. Like I was career driven. I was like money driven. I was very commercialized. Mm -hmm. Like I would constantly like buy things and like, I don't know. I just like, mm -hmm. I was just more focused on my career and on money and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I came here, like, it's just such a different feeling. Like That's so true. French people are more interested in like enjoying life and there's yeah. so much more to enjoy in life than work. I agree with like the different focus on work and the different place that work has in like French society. Yeah. For example, like we mentioned before this video about how people dress a lot more casually at work. Like you can mm -hmm. wear trainers, sneakers, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. <laughs> you can wear jeans to work, which is great because especially for me, like I didn't start work every day at the same time. So sometimes I would want to do stuff before work. Mm -hmm. I could mm -hmm. go out in my casual clothes and then still go to work and not feel like I was out of place. Yeah. Which was nice because it meant that like, for me, work wasn't the entire focus of the day. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, mm -hmm. I've got to get up and I've got to put on like a smart dress and then go to work and then come home and then I can change and then I can hang out with my friends. It's That's like, so I'm going to do the things I have to do today and I will work in between. Mm -hmm. No, and that's so true. Like, there's such a big culture here about like when you finish work, you go and have a drink, and you don't go home and change. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. if it, how it is back home, but when you're going out somewhere after work, you go home, you shower, yeah. you do your whole makeup, you do. That's like a thing. But here it's like, oh no no, we just go to a bar after straight from work. Like it's super chill, mm -hmm. and they really appreciate that. Yeah. Also, yeah. an important thing to note is when you're meeting French people for the first time. <laughs> The first question you shouldn't ask is what do you do for work? Yeah. Because definitely in England, that is one of the first things you ask about. Same people. in Australia. Yeah. And they're like, we're at a party. I'm not here to talk about my work. Yeah. Which is nice because I feel like there is, I don't know about you guys, but definitely in the UK, there is so much pressure put on people, like you were saying, mm -hmm. to like advance your career and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So especially, I don't know, for me, mid 20s still like haven't got it all figured out. It's, <laughs> it's quite comforting. comforting. Yeah. To know that like yeah. work isn't, the, like your whole life yeah no, it's a very different yeah. pace of life and yeah I like very, it. yeah and food is a huge thing like their meals are so prioritized yeah which is <laughs> so not back home like lunch is like on the go you quickly eat and go back to work but here it's like yeah like, take your time you sit down yeah you'll go to a enjoy. bistro like yeah, yeah like on your lunch break it's okay i feel like it's kind of like that scene in emily in paris like <gasps> I don't Stop. like Emily and Paris. Stop. At I know, all. but that is accurate. That's but insane. it's okay. It's accurate in that they were eating on a terrace and like they were and enjoying they were out their for lunch. Two hours. No. Yeah, I do that with my girlfriend. Oh my god, no. Okay, my <laughs> lunches are not two hours. Like, no. I do it with my boss though, so it's okay. If she's yeah, okay, out. you don't do that every lunch though. No, no, no. Like no. maybe but once in a while. Like. Oh my once god. Once or twice a week. <laughs> what? <laughs> Love my job. Oh my god. Okay, that is not my vibe. Like. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but the thing is, what what I can relate to that is sitting like going out for lunch with your colleagues yeah. and not just grabbing like takeaway, but like like a sad sandwich mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, and then eating it at your office. And I feel like that is like what we would do more in Canada. Like you would yeah. go grab like Subway or because it's like hustle pizza. culture as well. <laughs> yeah, like here it's more. Yeah, like, like, no, you sit to <gasps> eat. Hustle Capitalism. culture, like, make as much yeah. money as you can. Yeah. Like, Mm. No, it's seriously a thing. But as soon yeah. as lunch comes, it's like everything stops here. Yeah. Like you have to eat, have to take your time. And I think also as like soon as the end of your shift comes, yeah. I think for a lot of people, for example, if you want to go to the like prefecture or you have to go to a store or something <gasps> and they say that they close or even like the grocery yeah. store and they say they close at 5 p.m., they don't close at 5 p.m. <laughs> they close at like 4.45 yeah. because they are closed and they don't want to be there one minute past 5 p.m. Which I respect. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's Who a good thing. Good, good boundaries. boundaries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Boundaries. You're right. I think yeah. it is a boundaries thing. Yeah, they have good boundaries. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Any other positives? Yeah, I'm trying. I feel like I have so many positives. I started eating organic food when I moved here. Oh, that is my biggest positive. Because why? Why? why because you? like okay, so I really like the idea of organic food, but organic food is not at all common in Canada. Like really, I'm shocked by that. Yeah, like I don't know. Like there's a big focus on GMOs. Like I remember in school we learned about the positive side of GMOs and not necessarily what? the negative side. Like and okay, that's a whole other debate. But yeah. I'm just saying like like not today. I don't know. There was no focus on. There was less of a focus on like going back to nature and like mm -hmm. 
yeah. living a more natural life and I moved here and like I don't know there's just so much more awareness for the environment yeah. and natural products and I think that but yeah I think that goes also to like people look more natural i don't know it's a more natural no, life i would so say true. No something that i really love is in the supermarkets very like especially in the fresh fruit and veg like produce section yeah there is very little plastic yeah like in a lot of the supermarkets that you mm -hmm. go to you like pick and weigh your own things you can bring your own bags to weigh stuff in yeah which i love it's such a it's such a great change and they should have that in every supermarket like <laughs> across the world you know like yeah and also things yeah. aren't like crazy huge like they're natural yeah. i find in like yeah. back home like our tomatoes are huge and it's like well it's because they're gmo exactly like it's the same thing in canada everything's and, natural here and my my friends actually brought this up like when i first came here i was so used to eating like tomato salad and it would be like december and i would be eating tomatoes and they'd be like why are you eating tomatoes in December? Like you have to eat with the seasons. Like yeah. where is that tomato coming from? Like it's not coming from France. Like you're, what are you doing? And so they were like, no, winter is more like squash and sweet potato. And yeah, like, that's so true. there's a big, there's a way, there's a bigger focus on being one with the environment. Yeah. Like, I don't know how no, else to just say like that. like eating yeah. natural, not like processed. Yeah, exactly. That's a big thing. Yeah. But I think that's because stuff like GMOs is banned in France. Like That's great though. Although it's... I do really miss seedless grapes. I'm a seedless watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> seedless... Oh, that, yeah. uh, that was a big thing. Like grapes and watermelon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Oh, and also like one thing I, I think I've noticed here is like, I don't know. I went my first week, first two weeks. I think I ate a, bit, a baguette every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I didn't feel like crap about it and i'd always like some of french people i know they eat like cheese every day and mm -hmm. all that stuff and they just don't gain weight i think it's because it's just like fresh produce and they only eat at specific times yeah yeah they don't um snack, snack. throughout the day it's and i really love that it's yeah. like i've adopted i've adopted to that now see you're using french words j'ai adopté uh, yeah, yeah see right. like our english is what is happening but i like i don't snack much and i used to feel crap when i'd snack on, like, i'd eat like a whole bag of chips back home yeah and then like pass out you know yeah but no. i don't do that here because yeah. no one else does that no. so i'm like oh i'm not gonna eat a snack yeah while no one else is yeah. I think that's like if you like if you look at a French how they eat. There's like breakfast. Yeah. Then there's lunch, and then lunch there's lunch is like usually big. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. Then you have goûter, which is like maybe five p.m. You have a small snack, and then you have dinner like very late. <laughs> that's yeah. another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but I kind of like it. I don't know. Me too. I'd like the days yeah. go longer. Yeah. But they go really. Quick I think as that's well. what that's, that's the whole like enjoying life. You're like you know. Yeah. Let's make the day last longer. We'll eat later. You know. Like, yeah, that's so yeah. true. I don't know. I don't know. My positive. I don't know if you have any positive. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I just love being here. <laughs> yeah, I There's think. There's a lot yeah. of culture. Like I feel that, like especially somewhere like Paris. Mm -hmm. Like if you're under twenty six and you oh, have yeah. like. A card that says that you're like a red that you're, that you that you live here. Yeah. yeah, you can get into almost every single museum for free. That's amazing. and and there's also events like it's not just yeah. the museums like there's yeah like there's a lot of free stuff for you to do like the Arc de Triomphe like free um, the Eiffel mm -hmm. Tower is not free but you can get like a student ticket for five euros like yeah, yeah. and like such beautiful monuments so. yeah <laughs> so it's really exciting to be like surrounded by so so much culture so yeah. much art like history. Mm -hmm. And also not have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. you're not excluded yeah. from it, which is great. But that's why you should get a visa or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, not a Doris. This is such a positive way to end this video. Just like we had to end it with a positive. I'm um, like, no, but it's true. There like, so I think it can be so hard because like it's easy to get caught in the negatives when you're frustrated and stuff. But like at the end of the yeah. day, I've lived here for so long and I don't want to move. Like I love it here and yeah. Can we end on what's happening? been our favorite moment yeah oh my god yes. Yes. i think that's a nice moment <laughs> so i was looking in a boulangerie when i was walking home and it was actually curfew time so the curfew was like 7 p.m and it was like 6 50 but i was like gazing inside this like boulangerie okay and i was just looking at the cakes and the woman working came out and gave me a pastry oh my god what how nice is that and that was like and i was like oh, merci beaucoup and she was like yeah there you are like that is so cute yeah that's really adorable. she that's saw me like sweet. gazing inside and like 
That's so cute. That's actually so nice. Like, that made my day, and I was like, okay. Like, and it was when I was really homesick, so I was like, oh, you know. Yeah. You know. Like, oh. <laughs> and it was really, it was really good. It was like a ta ta boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ta-ta-ta. Ta-ta-ta. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, For me, it's so hard to pick, like, Oh, oh, there's so one many. singular favorite moment. Yeah, yeah. There's because a whole collection, like, but you can just share definitely them. like just all the people that I've met. Mm, there yeah. were so many different types of people who were all here for different reasons, and especially yeah. like when you meet international people, for example, mm-hmm. like we've all made a choice to move and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. made a choice to sort of uproot our lives, change everything. We've gone through the same struggles, like we've gone through these culture shocks. That's so true. And we've made it out the other side, and now we're like living our best lives yeah and like you know, we all know each other now. yeah which is crazy i would and have never met you not guys. even just international people like some of the french people i've met yeah i don't know like you said it's, it's oh, the i got the camera <laughs> what is happening no like the appreciation for life i think i'm gonna preface this by saying once again the memory card friend now so i don't know <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna be an awkward transition but yeah anyways um my favorite thing i think Ugh, man, like for real, there are so many good things. Like it's yeah. really hard, and I like what you're saying about like living our best lives. I really feel like, yeah, I am like living my best life, and every day I'm like, it's crazy that I'm here. But I think like recently, one of the nicest moments I think is when we were going to watch the game. We were going to watch a soccer game, and um, like before the soccer game, we were having a picnic, and we went on the Ile de what's it called? Um, I don't know. I'll put it on the screen something somewhere. Something the Liberté or something? Well, yeah, it's by the, the statue, the mini Statue of Liberty. It's on that island. And the thing is, like, we were having this picnic. We were having such a good time. And, like, we had the Eiffel Tower in the background. And yeah, it was just, like, beautiful. it was just, like, this moment where it was, like, I'm so thankful to be here. Like, I'm so thankful for, like, such awesome people. No, it's <laughs> honestly, like, but we've had so many yeah. good moments together. Yeah. I genuinely like, feel like the people that you meet really make the experience for you. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree with that. Like, I have so. become, like, so much more of a positive person because mm-hmm. of moving here, because of meeting you guys, because of, yeah. like, interactions that I've had with other people, with French mm-hmm. people, like... Yeah. It all comes together, making you a new person. Oh my god, yeah. It all comes together in the end. And when you return home, you're that person who's like, oh, Paris <laughs> yeah. changed me. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I don't care, yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, if you guys are watching this and you're, like, you know, thinking about moving abroad, not even to just to France, like, just thinking about moving abroad yeah. or, you yeah. know, whatever, yeah, do it. Like, yeah. You have to, and you get a level of empathy for others as well yeah an understanding like i think you're i think that's the thing when you live in one place your whole life like you're kind of ethnocentric and that mm-hmm. like you're so used to the people and the routine and the culture mm-hmm. and when you expand that and you like when you expand that you learn so much more you learn new people you learn new ways of life and i think that helps you find how you yeah. truly want to live your life that's it's so good to step out of your comfort zone yeah definitely yeah definitely so yeah, on that happy note, maybe we'll end this really long video. <laughs> uh, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, I want to film with you guys all the time. If there's anything you guys want to see from us about like our life in Paris, about living in France, literally anything. How to make friends. How to yeah. make friends. Yeah. It's possible. Any stories you want us to tell. Yeah. Oh we, yeah. We, we, have, do like we have a lot of stories. Yeah. yeah. We, we got it all up here. Um, but yeah, okay. We let's... should do that with like alcohol or something. Yeah, we were thinking of doing a cocktail night and maybe chat, chatting with you guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If there's something that you guys want to see from us, Please leave it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Make sure you like this video. Oh, yeah. Make sure you subscribe and like this video. Wait, we have to do it together. Like this. That's why I end all my videos. Okay. Like that at the end. Like this? Oh, two? Yeah, you can do one. Okay, I'll do one. Okay, okay. We have to make it in the Then I'll do one then. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. uh, Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, we did it. Oh my god. Okay, great job, guys.